us the biggest shout of praise that you can. Hallelujah. Come on, let's make more noise in this place than the stadium has ever heard. Come on, all the brothers, all the sisters, everybody here today. Come on. We chose to come outside because our Lord and Savior 2,000 years ago was crucified publicly. So we choose to celebrate Him publicly today and to see many thousands of lives changed and touched in Jesus' name. People are still coming in. We have thousands and thousands of people here. Um, it's amazing what God is going to do today. His presence is here and you are not here by accident. And I know you are sitting in the hot seats in the middle and excuse me for wearing my sunglasses because my eyes are light and I won't be able to see you. I'm sorry. But listen, hell is going to be much hotter than that seat you're sitting on today. So sweating a little bit may just help my message to get you to make up your mind that you are going to decide today to follow Jesus Christ because this is not a religion we're busy with. Our world is in a crisis, our country. And as we celebrate Passover, which was in the Old Testament, the start of the Exodus, which means a mass departure of God's people out of Egypt, a land of bondage. I want to say today that Jesus Christ is our Exodus. And we can choose today to have an exit and to find the way and the road out of the land of bondage into the land that God has for us. So come on. I know you love Him on TBN, hundreds of thousands watching all over Africa. This live event, come on, we are making history. That is a fact. Also one gospel. Give the Lord Jesus your biggest praise that you can. Come on. I know you're getting hot, but some of you have sat here and you've watched cricket games and you are here all day. Now, we are there. You have a lot of lager, a lot of soup, and you have a lot of laughs. And it was too makkelijk for you to be so many sun to sit. But now you're going to with a sore cup. You're not going home with a sore head today. You're going home today, touched, changed by the power of God. Listen, look around you. See thousands of white people, thousands of black people, thousands of Asians together. This is what South Africa needs. The politicians do not have the answer. We have the answer. His name is Jesus Christ, and we do not apologize for it. Also, um, it is an open event. It's okay, we don't get distracted, but if your kids get a little bit uh, too distracting for other people, control them a little bit. I'm asking because lives are going to change here today, and that's why we are doing this. We could have sat in our buildings, Everybody has taken, made a sacrifice to be here. So let's allow God to do what He wants to do. If it's one life that is touched today, then this whole event is worth it. Amen. And in your homes today as well, watching, Father, let the name of Jesus be glorified. Let every broken heart be healed. I pray that you capture the hearts and the minds of people now by the power of the Holy Spirit. That every distraction will be arrested and people will be captivated by your word and by your presence. And even the Son, Father, would not be a distraction because we sit in your presence and we realize that this is the greatest day apart from Sunday that as Christians we come and we push a pause button and we reflect and we remember all that Jesus did for us and we come say again thank you Jesus we worship you ons on bitty ons verhef in naam ons staan voor u met harte vol lof Onbeschaamd. Want ons weet, is die oplossing, is die antwoord. You alone are the way, the truth and the life. And we are here today to celebrate all that you did for us in Jesus' name. Will you give the Lord one more praise before you take your seat, please? Thank you.
I contemplate the long time about the message. Obviously, you may take your seats. And I won't be long. And I know you're not here by accident. Apology for those of you that are sitting around the corner. People are still coming in. I've seen people walk in while I give the altar call and they get saved. Many people are going to be touched here today. Because I'll tell you something. That with what's happening in the world, people need truth. People are grappling around, looking for answers. Our country is divided. Africa is divided. Our people are broken. So when we talk about Passover and we talk about Jesus, the Lamb of God that was slain for us, we realize that God brought reconciliation and His message is one of peace. And these voices, political and voices of, of others that always want to divide us. Today we will see again what Jesus did. And again today we will decide that we will stand as a nation, as a people for truth. Not for culture, not for our traditions, but we will stand for the ultimate price that Jesus paid. I talk to people sometimes and they are so opinionated and do not realize that no matter how big you are today, and I've seen this, when people breathe out their last breath and when people face the door of death, suddenly their conversation changes because now there is a reality that they face. This is what happened 2,000 years ago. So my message it's a little bit unusual for a Passover message, but it's going to challenge you and it's going to leave you changed today. My message today, the cross or the crowd, you have to choose. The cross or the crowd. In Luke 23, I read verses after the trial of Jesus Christ. The Messiah that is judged by man, planned by God, found totally innocent. And Pilate comes to the people, to the crowd, and he gives them an option. On that day, either to release a criminal, a murderer, or to release Jesus the Christ. And we read from verse number 18, the Bible says, And they all cried out at once, saying, Away with this man, and release to us Barabbas who had been thrown into prison for certain rebellion made in the city and for murder. Pilate, therefore, wishing to release Jesus, again called out to them. But they shouted, crucify him, crucify him. The same crowd that shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, when he entered Jerusalem. On this day, they shout, crucify him, crucify him. Then he said this to them a third time. Why, what evil has he done? I have found no reason for death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. But they were insistent, demanding with loud voices that he be crucified. And the voices of these men and of the chief priests prevail. Verse 32. There were also two other criminals led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they were crucified with him. The criminals, one on the right and the other on the left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, the very ones who murdered him, the very ones who beat him, the very ones who stripped the flesh from his body with a cat of nile tails. The Bible says he was marred beyond recognition. When he hung on that cross, it's not that beautiful picture that you see of Jesus. His beard was plucked out. He was shamed for you and me. He faced God's wrath and God's judgment apart from the physical punishment He faced. And yet, our Savior hangs on the cross and He says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. They divided His garment and cast lots. And the people stood looking on. A lot of people looking on. A lot of people looking on at the crises that we face in our world. And all they have is an opinion. I say it again, I wonder what changed in these people where one day they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna. And on this day, because of people who incited them, 
the chief priests, the religious leaders, there they stand in the midst of the crowd and they lost themselves in that moment of insanity. The people stood looking on, but even the rulers with him sneered saying, he saved others, let him save himself if he is the Christ, the chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming and offering him sour wine, saying, if you are the king of the Jews, then save yourself. And an inscription also was written over him in the letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. I'll tell you today, he is the king of the Jews and the king of the Gentile. He is the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. Come on, even those who mock him and scoff him, one day will have to acknowledge that he is king and that he is Lord. Come on, somebody in this stadium, shout Jesus is king and give him a praise. Come on. Then the one criminal who were hanging blasphemed him, saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself. And us, more than ever, people are blaspheming the name of Jesus. Hollywood has made it a profession to mock Christianity, to mock our values. Government officials have made it their mission to stomp out any legacy of Christianity. But I'll tell you, they will not prevail because God said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. I'll tell you that the name of Jesus will shine brighter and the name of Jesus will be glorified. And there is no devil, no commission, no political party that will stomp out the name of Jesus or the church of Jesus. Come on, if you love Jesus, I know you are. You do, you're not sitting in a church building. Jump to your feet and give him a praise. Come on. Praise of the Jim of Point, the praise of the new carefully. So the one criminal with his final breath mocks Jesus. The other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you under the same condemnation? And we indeed just justly, for we receive our due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Sinless. He became sin for you and me and faced the punishment that you and I should have faced. And yes, the amazing part of it, the Bible says, it pleased the Lord, the Father, to lay upon Him the iniquity of us all. Although the devil thought this was his plan, striking the seed of the woman, this was God's master stroke of redemption for humanity. When God Himself put His Son on that cross, dying for you and dying for me, facing the judgment, the wrath, the anger of God, so that you and I, my brother and my sister, can be saved. And I'll tell you today, I don't care who you are, how good you are, you need saving. Every human being in this world needs to be saved. Every human being at some time has to come to the point to realize, I'm lost, I need a Savior. Your Savior died for you on that day face the judgment of God and with his final breath the one man mocks him and the other man cries out for mercy look at this God's grace and mercy and he says Lord remember with me when you come into your kingdom and Jesus said to him assuredly I say to you today you will be with me in paradise Abram's bosom that was about the sixth hour the time of the afternoon sacrifice that's when Jesus the Lamb of God was sacrificed by God according to fulfill prophecy and scripture. And there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour for three hours. Suddenly, imagine the sun is darkened, which shows the judgment of God upon His Son. And I'll say it many times so you and I don't have to face God's judgment. Ek is al so moeg om op mense te praat oor Jesus Christus en die ou sê vir my man ek het my kerk, of die ou sê vir my man ek druk nou nie soos my bierman of vloek soos my bierman nie. Your good works will not save you. Because the Bible says your works of righteousness are as filthy rags in the sight of God. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says the sun was darkened and then the veil of the temple was torn in two. God cuts a covenant between Him and us and He announces a new dispensation of peace. Not the kind of peace you get in a bottle of tablets, 
but peace with God. You see, my dear friend, until your heart doesn't come to rest with God, you will always be looking for something, maybe more money, maybe more fame, more power, maybe another wife, another this, another that. But Jesus came to cut a covenant of peace. And this is not man reaching out to God. This is God reaching out to man and making His peace with us and saying to us, the Gentile and the Jew, you now can have peace with God. There is a new dispensation that comes with Jesus, which is called grace and truth, that God will treat you better than you deserve. God will treat you according to His love, His grace and His mercy. And at that moment, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed out his last. So when the centurion saw what happened, he glorified God saying, certainly this is a righteous man. And he became sin so that you and I could become the righteousness of God in Christ. Listen now. And the whole crowd who came together to that side, seeing what had done, beat their breasts and they returned. I think if that picture played off in the stadium today, it would be one of the most dramatic moments ever witnessed. People shouting, crucify Him, crucify Him. And after Jesus died, people came for hours afterwards and they looked at Him and they beat their chest in triumph. We have succeeded. But what they thought was their plan to silence our Messiah was God's beginning of your redemption and your Messiah, your Lord. When He breathed out His last, He went into the corridors of hell and He defeated Satan and He took from that devil the keys of hell and death. And the Bible says we're going to talk about it on Sunday. On the third day, He rose again and our Lord and our Savior is alive. Come on, somebody that believes it, jump to your feet today and give your risen Christ a praise. Hallelujah. So there are six groups at the cross I want to touch on. And then I'm going to ask, in which of these groups do you stand? The first, the mob that mocked him. The second group were the critics. The third group, the general crowd. The fourth group, the fans. If I had to ask how many uh, Blue Bull supporters or fans here today, many of you would shout, or Lions supporters, or Chiefs supporters, or let's call them fans. People go to the rugby stadium and they paint themselves blue until their two team loses once too often. Till they move to Cape Town and they convert to a stormer. Then there were the two thieves. And then there were the committed disciple, the first group, the group that mocked him were the chief priests. They were the ones that incited the crowd against Christ. Their mission was to destroy the voice and the legacy of Christ. A mob are those who stir up a crowd. Mostly people are neutral. We see it in our country until some politician says, we are going to have a shutdown. And then people are like lambs. Meh, meh. My brother and my sister, listen to me. I'm not even going to go to any political leader. Although we respect and honor those in politics and pray for them, we do not follow them. We follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. And if they send a message that is anti the Bible and they tell us we may not pray, they tell us we may not worship, then we will pray louder and we will worship louder and we will teach our children the Word of God and we will pray in our schools. Can I have an amen from a young person here today in Jesus' name? I mean, I sat on that JJ Tabani talk show today. I mean, I think he had more breakaways in any show ever. Um, but um, because sometimes people don't want to hear the truth, which is the truth is Jesus Christ. You take God out of society. You take God out of your life. You take God out of your world, out of your university. 
then decay, rot will begin to come in. Whether it's your mind, your soul, your physical body, relationships, your job. So South Africa, with the elections of next year, we have to turn back to God. Can I have an amen? We need politicians who will turn back to God. I said we need politicians who will turn back to God. Not politicians who want to come to church to campaign for votes. No, those days are over and our platforms are not available. We want to see politicians speak up for God in Parliament and acknowledge that there is a God. Because if you don't believe there is a God, then your conscience has no sense of morality or responsibility which is evident all over South Africa. So to fix this country, we need to bring God back to society. So they incite the people. You watch this. Sometimes people march, you ask them what you're marching for. They don't even know. Somebody gave them a t-shirt. Somebody told them to shout. They shout. They don't even know why they're shouting. Say amen, please. So from people to being neutral, the chief priests who hated Jesus. And I'll tell you, they are the enemies of the church in South Africa. And we saw that during COVID. And we made up our minds never again. Will a government or anybody dictate to us and tell us we may not worship the living God? Can I have an amen in Jesus' name? Never again, never again will anybody steal our praise, our worship, our adoration. Never again will we close the doors of our church and stop the suffering and broken from coming to find peace and refuge. Oh, come on, in the presence of Jesus Christ. Never again, never again will we allow a mob to incite Sometimes people are told to do things they don't even know why they do it. They just conform. They just go along because of intimidation. What is it about the name of Jesus that evokes a response like nothing else? You don't see Hollywood blaspheme Muhammad. They know there'll be a consequence. They don't blaspheme the name of Buddha. But every one of those fools think they have the right to blaspheme the name of Jesus Christ. Go walk in any shopping center, go anywhere and say Castle Lager. You'll get no response. Somebody will say, you can say anything you want to say. You can even curse, cuss, and there's not going to be a response. But you stand up for lunch and you lift up your hands and you say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for this meal. And you see that whole restaurant will be stuck and glued because I'll tell you, there's just something about that name. His name is like no other name. His name is above every other name. His name is exalted by God. His name is the name of truth and life. That's why the devil hates the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus evokes a response. You cannot be neutral when you hear the name of Jesus. Some begin to mock Him. Others want to worship Him. The angels in heaven fall in worship and adoration when they hear the name. Demons tremble in fear. The mention of His name, some get mad. Don't talk to me about this Jesus thing. Hey, you can be smart in your own eyes and you can mock Him. And you can say like some people say, I've turned away from Christianity. I don't believe in this Jesus. I tried this Jesus. You don't try Jesus. You surrender your life to Jesus. You give your life to Jesus. And if you do, you will find the truth and the life that comes with the person of Jesus Christ. Oh, you can be all powerful. And you can be one of those mockers that mock the church. Are you one of those happy clappies? You can be one of those that are vocal about your opinion. But my friend, one day you will breathe out your last breath and you will think differently. If you have the opportunity, which most people don't have, they die suddenly in an accident. Sometimes people are diagnosed with a terminal disease and I think sometimes it's a terrible way to go, but it's a more merciful way because those people have time to make right with God and make right with other people. If you die today, where would you go? You have no guarantee of tomorrow. 
That's why God sent His Savior. He didn't send an angel. He sent His Son to die for you and me, to get your attention, to say there is no life outside of the person of Jesus Christ. He's not part of God's plan of salvation. He is the plan of salvation. So some get mad. We get glad. Can I hear you this morning? Come on. Hallelujah. Some mock and scoff. Others rejoice. Come on, that's you this morning. His name is like no other. John Lennon, when the Beatles were at the height of success, made a foolish statement and said, we have just become more famous than Jesus Christ. No John Lennon, no Beatles, you've come and gone. Your star has diminished. Your graves are, your bones are in a grave. But the star of Jesus Christ is shining brighter than ever. Come on. And his bones are no longer in a tomb. He is risen and he's more powerful than ever. Oh, come on, say amen. More books have been written about him than anybody else. More songs have been sung about him than anybody else. More poems have been composed about him than anybody else. He still is the bright and morning star. He still is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He still is the Alpha and the Omega, the Rock of Ages, the Lily of the Valley, the Rose of Sharon, the way, the truth, the life, the beginning and the end, the risen Christ, our soon and coming King. We wait for the return of Jesus. His name is above every other name. We still call Him Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He still is my Lord, my Master, my Saviour. If you go through the worst storm, He's there. If you find yourself in a fiery furnace, you will find Him there. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. When you find yourself in a lion's den, He will be there. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He's a comforter in times of trouble. A friend that sticks closer than a brother. Other Messiahs have come and they've gone. But our Messiah is still alive. Hallelujah. His just star is shining brighter than ever. His name is still above every other name. And in America a long time, the name of Rockefeller could open the doors of banks. The name of Einstein would open the minds of scientists. But His name opens every door that is shut. His name opens a hardened heart. His name opened the Red Sea. His name made the sun to stand still. His name opened the womb of Sarah. His name protected Shadrach, Meshach. Oh, come on. Abednego in the fiery furnace. His name shut the mouths of lions. His name opened the eyes of the blind. His name raises the dead back to life. His name gives hope and deliverance. The Bible says God has exalted him and given him the name. That is above every other name. I'm getting hot and I know you are. But let me say it again. Hell is much hotter. Just another three hours. I mean another few minutes. The second group were the critics, the religious leaders. We all have them. But nobody ever erected a statue for a critic. The names of those high priests are not recorded in Scripture. The names of those religious leaders are not recorded in Scripture. But the names of the women that stood at the foot of the cross, Mary, Mary, and Mary, Hail Mary, are recorded in the Bible. Those critics are the ones that criticized Him throughout His ministry. Whenever He did a good deed, they would criticize Him. So they were there with the Pharisees, the scribes, the high priests, to incite the crowd against Jesus. And they mocked Him as well. If you are the Christ, get yourself off the cross. People mock you sometimes. They mock your faith. If God was good, why have you gone through this? Why are you facing this trouble? I don't know. But I know that God is good. And I know that weeping endures for a moment, but joy comes in the morning. I know that my Savior will not leave me and will not forsake me. And even times I want to give up, my Savior will be there to carry me. You listen to Super Rugby or any sport program, the people that know the most about the game never played rugby a day in their lives. 
Je luister naar oom Jan wat bel daar zo uit Kakamase wereld en hij praat en hij zei nou precies wat moest gebeur Maar hij zit daar zo 400 kilogram oorgewig En hij weet beter Because people think they know better Sometimes they come to our churches and they criticize our worship as if they have the right to criticize our worship. Listen nicely, we're not worshiping you. You may be an onlooker, a bystander. We are worshiping the living Christ, come on. And we are not ashamed, come on. Is there a worshiper in this place today? Give him a radical praise and a worship today in Jesus' name. Come on, one gospel. You're still with us for two minutes. The third group, the general crowd. I've spoken about them now, those easily swayed. I wonder where these people were when they should have spoken up. Why they were so silent. What is the problem with South Africa? The silent majority. Not the few extreme radical politicians. They have no power without the crowd. The crowd has to become vocal. The crowd has to go to the elections next year. All young people. You should vote next year. Say a good amen in Jesus' name. Vote for the leaders that will make this country better. One gospel has to go. It's an honor. Thank you for allowing us live with you today. I tell you, God loves you. And you today sit with your family and you break bread with your family and you thank God for what He did for you. Sometimes we want to serve God by the way. He never died for us by the way. He paid with His very life. He shed every drop of blood for you and for me. Sometimes people think we want to serve God without sacrifice. There's always a sacrifice, especially on a day like this, where we come and we put everything else aside. And we just reflect on what God has done. And I'll tell you, He did it for you. Because He loves you. And right there in your home this morning, you can open your heart and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. God bless you. Give them a hand. Hallelujah. I mean, you, you go on social media and, 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 and Christians criticize one another. Stop your critical conversation and become part of the solution. Stop being swayed by every wind of doctrine. The Bible says in John 21 verse 25, there also were many other things that Jesus did, which if, the, if they were written one by one, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that were written. So all these people that were touched by Jesus, how? When it mattered that they just deny Him. Peter, one of them. I don't know the Christ. The same ones who worshipped Him suddenly swayed like people in South Africa go back to worshiping a Sangoma, turn away from a life of prayer and go follow another practice. Because somebody with a wrong agenda swayed you away from the cross. This morning, you need to allow the Holy Spirit to turn you back to the foot of the cross because you have to decide the crowd or the cross the crowd or the cross. You run with the crowd, you will lose yourself. You find Christ, you will gain yourself and find your redemption. How is it that we so easily forget the 10 lepers that Jesus healed? One came and worshiped Him. Have we become ashamed in South Africa to speak for our faith? I mean, I said a few things on that JJ Tabani show. And people say, Pastor, thank you for talking about Jesus. Isn't that what we all should do? At every opportunity, turn the conversation, become the influencer in the room, and not allow people to force their stinking agendas on us and discredit us because of their perverse thoughts about us. We know who we are. We know whose we are. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. We don't have to bow or give in or yield to anybody else. Come on, if there's a radical Christian, jump to your feet under your umbrella and give him a praise. Come on. The fourth group of fans. 
fans are consumers. They never get into the game. They watch from the safety of the banks. That's not you today. That's your seat. When their team messes up, they choose to deny their team. When the team works, go Bulls! When they were the right people, I'm a Christian. When we were somebody else, I'm not a Christian. Maybe not what they say, but how they live and what they do. Fans are those who follow from a safe distance. Even Jesus had many fans who were not true followers. In Luke 23 verse 49, but all his acquaintances, I like the choice of that word. Somebody that's not committed. And the woman who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. Most watched from a safe distance when the chips were down. Peter denies him three times. The 70 are worshipping from a safe distance. At that moment they were fans. They forgot that they were called to be followers. Then there were the two thieves in their final moment. I'm almost done. The one arm mocked the other one asked for mercy. People are the same today. I've prayed with hundreds and hundreds of people in hospital rooms in their final moment. I prayed for a man once. He was burned. His whole body, 70-80% burn wounds. And I spoke to him about Jesus Christ and he would not listen. He was cursing God all the time. And he a gefluk, gelaster, gefluk, gelaster. Ek sê vir my asjeblief, asjeblief. Hy fluk en fluk en fluk. En my hy fluk er hy, is hy die eeuwigheid in. A family called me to hospital once, this big father, grandfather, tied to a bed, busy dying, 280 pounds. And I, 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 I bent to his ear, because he can hear me. I know he's going. The family's praying. He's never given his life to Jesus like those two thieves. It's his final moment. I say from an Afrikaans, Oom, you met your heart for Jesus here. I say, Nia. I'll repeat it in English three times. I said, sir, please give your life to Jesus. No. Give your life to Jesus. No. And while he was shaking, shutting his heart to God, he died. And you can sit here today and say there's a purgatory. There's not. You can say people that have messed up, somebody can pray for them. And they can find their redemption in their life. You're after. No, they can't. You have one life to live and you have to make it count. These two thieves, in their final moment, the one is mocking and the other one is crying out to God, what would you do if this was your final moment? The truth is you don't know because death comes as a thief in the night. Death comes uninvited. Death comes unexpected. The Bible says it's a point for men once to die and then the judgment. It's an appointment you will not escape, whether you are a president, a billionaire. One day, somebody will have a service for you. And then you will not be in that coffin. You can take your gold with you. But my friend, you came into this world naked. And you will leave this world naked. And go to God and give account. The same time I've seen people who never served God in their last moment call on the name of Jesus and they were saved like this thief on the cross. I close five minutes. The last group, a few committed disciples. That's all of you sitting in the sun without an umbrella. Amen. And they stood by the foot of the cross, his mother, whose name was Mary. I think there was only one name for women in those days. It's Mary. And his mother's sister, Mary, and the wife of Clopas, Oh, she was the wife of Clopas, she's Mary. And there's Mary Magdalene. Mary, Mary, Mary. So if your name is Mary, 10 to 1, you're a very committed follower of Christ. And then John the Baptist was there. They drew to the foot of the cross where nobody else would. They chose the cross and not the crowd. Because the crowd says, follow us. Let's live it up. We can get serious about God later on. The cross says, follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. The crowd, be happy. If it feels good, do it. It's okay. Everybody's doing it in any case. The cross says, you belong to God. You are bought with the blood of Jesus. Glorify God with your spirit and your body. 
The crowd says, live for the moment. Might be your last moment, you don't know. The cross says, live for eternity. So at the cross, Jesus makes a statement and you have to choose. Do you have to choose the cross or the crowd? There is no neutral ground. Do you stand this side or that side? Do you stand with the crowd or you stand at the foot of the cross? At the cross, Jesus made an eternal statement that God is not mad with you, but God loves you. And no matter what you do, nothing can separate you from the love of God. The cross is not a method. The cross is a message. It's God shouting out to humanity. You can be forgiven. You have acceptance. You can be reconciled to God. For the Bible says in Romans 3, 23, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. No matter how good you are, we were born in sin because of Adam. But we were redeemed from sin because of the last Adam who is Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 5, verse 8 to 9, God demonstrated His own love toward us. He that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath because of the price Jesus paid. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 19, God was in Christ. Hallelujah. On that day when Jesus was crucified, God was there. He put His Son on that cross to reconcile the world back to Himself not imputing their trespasses to them. And He's committed to us a word of reconciliation. Another translation says God lives in us and God is shouting through us to humanity. Make your peace with God. Get right with God. Stop messing around in this world. Your life is too valuable to just waste away. God loves you. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. So at the cross, God reveals His heart for you. That Jesus faced your judgment. He went to hell in your stead. That's why He's the only one who can save you. Some of you in COVID, you've, you've run back to other forms of religion, other forms of practices. Some of you have gone back to the things that could never help you before. Today you have to make a decision because there is no other name. Acts 4 verse 12 says, Under heaven, given among men, whereby we can be saved, but the name of Jesus. John 14 verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Your good works will not get you to heaven. Your religion will not get you to heaven. Your ancestor will not get you to heaven. You have to call on the name of Jesus yourself and you have to make up your mind. The cross or the crowd. Straight is, wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be on that way. But straight is the gate, narrow is the way, Jesus Christ, that leads to everlasting life. Where do you stand this morning? Still watching on TBN. This message is for you because God loves you. This cross is a statement. It's God putting a tree in the ground and making a declaration not a debate, a final statement that I so love you that I sent my son to die for you. People talk about the social ills of society. People talk about crime and we have to deal with all these things. But you know, before I was saved, I was a racist. Before I got saved and gave my life to Jesus, I was bound by alcohol, drugs, violence. That's why I know Jesus. I don't know about him. I grew up in church without changing. I never found Jesus. I had a religion. I'm not talking about a religion today. Because that's the way the crowd wants. Every now and again go to church and they feel better about themselves. No. Jesus came to save you. And he hung on that cross for you. 
And the Bible says, he that has the Son has life. He that does not have the Son of God does not have life. The cross or the crowd. Every human being has to decide. You cannot decide for your husband. You cannot decide for your child. It's a decision you have to make. Like those two thieves who hung on the cross. And the one said, Lord, have mercy. And the other one mocked him. What will you do this morning? Will your pride keep you away from God? Or will you bow your heart this morning and say, I accept the cross. I accept the Christ as my Lord and Savior. Because where has your debates brought you? Where has your opinions brought you? Where has so-called freedom brought our people? Freedom starts with the Lamb of God. That is your exodus. And that's your first step. Accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want every head bowed, please. Every eye closed. No one moving now. Just for a moment. Watching on TBN this morning as well. God is talking to you right in your home. Watching on YouTube. All our platforms. God's talking to you. I don't care who's sitting next to you. I don't care whether you're a billionaire, a doctor, a prime minister, a student, a pauper. Jesus died for you. And the cross is that declaration of His eternal love for you. And today you can accept that or you can walk away from it. God is talking to many of you this morning to make your peace with God. Because God made His peace with you 2,000 years ago. Today there's something happening in your heart. And you need to make your peace with God. People have prayed for you. Jesus died for you. So all over this place, with the many thousands and thousands and thousands of people in this place, the hundreds of thousands on television, Jesus said, I will stand at the door of your heart and knock. If you open, I will come and sup with you. The cross or the crowd, today you choose by giving your life to Jesus. Maybe you said that today, you say, Pastor, I followed God at one time, but like the prodigal son, I've grown cold. I've walked away from God. Then walk back to God this morning. Maybe you've never made your peace with God. Make your peace with God today. Because there is no guarantee of tomorrow. Every head bowed, people praying. On the stands. The thousands on the floor, on the banks. Today you say, I choose the cross. I want to get my life right with Jesus Christ. If that is the cry of your heart, quietly Wherever you are, raise your hand so I can pray for you. Slip your hand up high all over this place. Lift it up, lift it up high. Lift it up. Say, I choose. I choose. Lift it up. Lift it up. Hundreds and hundreds of hands everywhere. Lift it up. Lift it up right where you are. God is looking and God is knocking. Your response is to say, yes, Lord. Lift your hand. Say, include me in that prayer this morning. In Jesus' name. Will you please look at me? There are hundreds if not thousands of you that have raised your hand. Many of you brought your friends and you brought them to get saved this morning. So in a moment, we are going to sing a song and then we are going to ask you to make your way to the front. Obviously, we cannot touch this cricket pitch area, but I'm going to say a prayer with you this morning as you make a decision to choose the cross. Maybe you need to take your friend, your girlfriend, your wife, your family, and you come and give yourself to Jesus today. You commit your life to Christ. You come back to Jesus. So please, the first thing, if you are well able, will you please stand with me? I ask you respectfully, please, everybody, just for a moment, stand with me all over this place. Then all over this place, if you raised your hand or you did not, God is talking to you this morning. You want to get right with God, a new beginning. You want to surrender your life to Jesus today. Then I want you to take your Bible, your handbag, your personal belongings so it doesn't disappear. And I want you to leave your seat wherever you are. I want you to grab your friend by the hand. And I want you to come down the aisle closest to you, to my left, to my right, from that bank. You just walk down that path, walk down the aisles closest to you and come stand with me. Come stand with me this morning. Come on. 
Come give your life to Christ this morning. Come on. Bring yourself to the foot of the cross. You come on. You come on. Come on. Walk, 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 walk. The cross or the crowd. You come. Come on, church. Clap your hands. Reach your world. Come. Come, my young friend, for that. Come, 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 come. That's right for you on the foot for the Christ. Come on, this is going to take a long time because thousands are coming. So clap, 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 clap. Some of you from other churches, you brought your friend to get saved. Bring your friend. Walk your friend to the altar area this morning. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, ask the bullock in your heart. There's a year of it in your heart. Pray for all of Come on, dear. Come on, bro. Come, bro. Come, Tani. This is the last thing. But we are going to drop an ass on you. Ik maak je jouw besluit vandaag. Kom maar, kom maar. Ik kies die kruis. Kom maar, kom maar, kom maar. Clap, 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 clap. Als people come. Oh, kom maar, deze hebben we hebben te gaan. Shame, this is a walk of freedom. Grab your friend. You come. You come. Come as you are. Come as you are. Come on. Put your hands out to these people. Put your hand on your heart as we pray on television this morning as well. God can save you right where you stand. Just pray this prayer with me right now. I say, Lord Jesus. Everybody say this. Say, Lord Jesus, today I accept you as my Lord and as my Savior. I choose the cross. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe you rose from the grave. I believe you are alive. Today, I surrender my life to you and I thank you for a new beginning and for your blood that washes me 
white as snow. From today, I will follow you. You are my Lord, my King, and my Messiah. I have decided to follow Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Come on with the angels in heaven, we rejoice. Ek weer is baie warm. Ek staan soos jylle in die som, dankie. Kijk hoe lyk ek. My make-up is weg. Ek het drie kilogram verloor. Maar dit is een goeie saak. We want to pray with you. TBN is still watching with us. We're not going to do anything weird. So TBN are still with us for seven minutes. We are going to worship God. And then we will be over. But this is a holy moment. It's a holy day where we worship the Lamb that takes away the sin of the world. Let's not be fans. Let's not be critics. Let's not be part of those who incite others. Let's be the disciples of Christ, followers of Christ. This is what this world needs. The median age of South Africa, 27. The median age of Africa, 19. We're a country and a continent of young people. Our young people need to be led. You need to educate yourself and understand when you go to the polls next year what you are voting for and not allow any politician or any preacher for that matter to incite you in a direction that you're not clear about. I believe that God and God is with South Africa and Africa. I believe, and the rest of the world knows it as well, that Africa is the future. Yes, it is the truth. Africa is the future. Not New Zealand, not America, although they think they are, not the Europeans, Africa. We need to rebuild Africa. Black, white, Asian, colored together. And stop allowing people to divide us on our skin pigmentation. We come from one blood. It is the blood of Jesus Christ. And when we stand before God one day, we will stand as God's people. We will not stand as black people, white people, colored people, Asian people. So yes, a clue. Any speaker that divides on the basis of race refuse to follow that person because he will lead you down a path of destruction. I don't care what the name of that person is. A bishop, a prophet, Jesus died for the whole world. And as Christians, we find reconciliation with God and then reconciliation one with another. By this, the whole world will know we are His disciples. I do not serve God as an Afrikaans, pink Christian. I serve God as a child of God. And I tell people all the time, you look at me and you think I'm too white to be called an African. I'm as African as you are. And you better accept it because I'm not going and people are not going. And we together will build South Africa on the basis of truth. We need to get the Bible back in our schools. We need to get the Word back to our children. We need to get discipline back to young people. There is the principles of respect and honor, which you cannot do without God. We need to bring God back to society. So educators, influencers, politicians, do your job. Stand for God. Because one day you will stand before God and you will give account for this hour and for this watch. And if you make political statements, that divide people and alienate people from God, you will give account before God one day. You can do anything, but do not attack God and do not attack the church of God, which is black, white, colored, Asian, India. Call it what you want. That's what Jesus died for. And all the other rhetoric, all the other rubbish, 
should disappear from our social media pages. One amen. Because if you're still waiting for, the, for another liberator, you're waiting a long time. Because your liberation has come. What we need now are righteous people in governance. Because the Bible says when the righteous rule, the people will rejoice. So we will pray and we will vote for the righteous. Not for the corrupt. For the righteous. And if the Christians will vote, we will determine the future of South Africa. And I believe by God's grace, we will in Jesus' name say a good amen. So all the people on my left, if you can just go that way. Uh, we just want to give you something on this side. As that way, uh, as we close with a song. TBN, thank you for being with us. We know you're almost breaking away from us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for enduring the pain of the sun. But what a great day today. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord one more praise celebration, everybody. Hallelujah.